As we get started here uh, on aging, physical activity, and arthritis, I would like to also acknowledge uh, my co-authors on this presentation, Taryn Lees Taylor, who is a physician uh, in Ottawa, Catherine Casey, who is a professor of education at the University of Manitoba, Todd Taylor, who is a physiotherapist uh, um, in London, Ontario, and of course myself. Now we'll move ahead to uh, our first slide, and the, the slide will, uh, will give you an overview of what it is that uh, we're going to be talking about this morning. First of all, I think it's important that you realize that there are over 100 types of arthritis, although there are only five major types. And this morning, we're going to take a very in-depth look at osteoarthritis, the primary type of arthritis. We're going to look at the medical management of osteoarthritis. And we're also going to take a look at uh, healthy aging with arthritis and the results of uh, physical activity. Now, it's important uh, that you um, know exactly um, what we're talking about here this morning when we're talking about arthritis. Arthritis is a general term that refers to any inflammatory condition of a joint. And osteoarthritis, our major concern this morning, is caused by a general wearing down of cartilage. And a joint, of course, is the meeting of, uh, of two bones in the body. And um, the, uh, we're talking about the synovial fluid that lubricates them and also uh, the cartilage that protects them uh, on the um, outside. The joints most commonly affected by arthritis are the weight-bearing joints, the ankles, the knees, the hips, and the spine. And I'd like to uh, also inform you that there are a number of researchers around the world who uh, believe that there may be a um, hereditary factor involved here uh, when dealing with, uh, with arthritis. Uh, although there's little scientific evidence to support this right now, um, it appears that, um, that genetic factors may play a role um, in uh, this particular disease. You should also be aware of the fact as we get into this that um, men and women are affected equally um, by arthritis. However, the points of placement are different. In men, uh, arthritis primarily affects the hips, the wrists, and the spine, where in women it affects the hands, the knees, the ankles, and the feet. And also in women, uh, for some particular reason, which is probably uh, hormonally related, um, women uh, seem to experience the symptoms in more than one joint at a particular time where this is not necessarily so uh, for men. Well, what are the risk factors for arthritis? Well. Even though arthritis is not really a disease of aging, as we get older, arthritis sets in. And why? Well, there are five major reasons. One is that most of us are carrying a little excess weight, and therefore we're putting additional pressure, in particular, on the, uh, the uh, joints of the lower limb, the hip, the knees, and the ankles. And if we maintain a healthy body weight, we, of course, are not going to have this problem. Injury is a second uh, um, risk factor. And uh, you find this particular in people who have had work-related or sport-related or physical activity-related um, injuries, and therefore they've damaged uh, usually the cartilage uh, in the joint. And there are also certain complications come from, that come from diseases, in particular diseases related to cartilaginous uh, material. 
I've already mentioned that uh, some re researchers are uh, starting to show that there may be genetic hereditary factors. It's also known in particular um, with uh, certain types of arthritis that there are immune system abnormalities. And so for example, rheumatic um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, the immune system attacks its own uh, joint system and therefore leads to many problems. And it's now very well known that a lack of physical activity creates um, problems that lead to arthritis as we get older. And uh, there is no evidence to demonstrate that physical activity is dangerous to uh, um, uh, any form of arthritis. And uh, it is well known that if you do not uh, have enough physical activity, that uh, that leads to many other problems, but in particular obesity, which once again puts uh, stress and pain on the joints. Well, what are the major types, the five major types of arthritis? Number one, which most of this lecture will be related to, is osteoarthritis. This is the most common uh, form of arthritis. And um, in particular, um, it is a, uh, a type of arthritis that's related to stress on the joint. And we'll get into the different types of osteoarthritis, the primary and secondary ones, in a short period of time. The second most common, of course, is um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. And this, as you can see from the uh, picture uh, to the right on your screen, uh, you've probably seen uh, older individuals and some young people who have these tremendously large knots, appear to be knots. Uh, they're osteophytes primarily, or bone spurs, if you like, um, which really make it difficult to, to utilize um, the uh, particular joint. But these are primarily found in the hands and the feet. The third is lupus. And lupus, of course, is, is relatively well known, and we'll, we'll spend a little time on that. But it is a, a primarily a, an inflammatory disease um, affecting about 1% uh, of the population. And then we have spondylitis, AS, um, and this particular uh, disease is less than 1%, but uh, we'll talk a little bit about it. And uh, the fifth one, of course, is gout. And uh, gout is more prevalent in men. And uh, there are certain reasons for it, but it is primarily uh, one of uh, um, the joint uh, or the, um, the uh, foot primarily, uh, mainly the big toe, uh, where we get um, a tremendous amount of pain. And uh, this can partially be controlled by diet by um, uh, not uh, eating a lot of foods with a high content of protein, and also by um, uh, cutting back, uh, for the most part, on the uh, consumption of alcohol. So let's get started, and we'll talk a little bit about arthritis. Um, the, the five types, and remembering that um, as we do uh, talk about this, uh, rheumatoid arthritis is the first one that we're going to talk about, and uh, it is primarily uh, caused by the immune system attacking the joints in the body itself. So the body is really harming itself, and, and this, of course, is, does not happen very often uh, in the human body. And also, you have to remember that when it does happen, that um, it has tremendously deleterious and painful effects, uh, a lot of inflammation and joint damage, and of course, many osteophytes and bone spurs. And this particular disease uh, cannot be controlled. And about 1% of the, it, uh, sorry, it, it uh, can be controlled um, partially. Um, and it is suffered uh, by about 1% of the Canadian population. The, the second one, of course, was the, um, uh, we were talking about was lupus, and this is another indication of one of the signs of lupus. Uh, in this case, it's a skin rash across the face, 
Um, and uh, some individuals, uh, researchers have found that women suffer from this tenfold more than, uh, than men. And so uh, one can only suspect that there is a, uh, a hormonal factor involved in this. Um, AS, once again, um, can be controlled, and we're going to get into this when, when we talk about management, but exercise is a key cornerstone uh, to help avoid this particular disease. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later once we put the basics out of the way. And then finally, uh, just a slide on gout, uh, you can see um, where the gout attacks in this particular slide. Um, but it is the, uh, the primary joint before you get uh, down to the, uh, the end point, the small bones at the end of the toe. And uh, believe me, uh, you get swelling, uh, you feel like you have uh, bone spurs on that one particular spot, no place else in your body, but the pain uh, at times is enough to uh, make you go down on your hands and knees. It, it, is, it is excruciating at times. Okay. One of the things uh, that is related to our health care system um, is, is a bit of a problem in Canada and uh, many other nations, but uh, this particular slide just shows you the number of times that people with arthritis, whatever form it is, have to visit uh, their physician. And when you look at, when you add up those numbers, you're almost 12 million visits in a year to your physicians. And that makes it arthritis the number one cause for physician visits, and in particular in older people because they are the, the, the primary individuals making these visits. So we hear the healthcare system tell us that seniors uh, visit their, their physician six to eight times more uh, than uh, younger people, and uh, here's one of the primary reasons. So very, very important because a uh, tremendous cost to the healthcare system. In fact, it was estimated um, that in 2008, arthritis itself cost the healthcare system and individuals approximately $16 billion. Now that also includes time off work and work loss and the work loss by the employer, et cetera. But $16 billion, um, that is a tremendous amount of money. Now I'm just going to have to move my slides a little bit uh, so that I can keep track of them here. Okay, now we'd like to, I'd like to start talking um, a little bit, uh, or a lot really, uh, about um, um, osteoarthritis. And even though a recent report from the uh, Canadian Public Health System has said that, um, that Canadians, uh, approximately 10% of Canadians, um, suffer from osteoarthritis, so we're more interested in in the uh, seniors today, in the aging, what the aging effects and, and what seniors have suffered. And uh, we're talking anywhere after 55, we're talking anywhere between 80 and 100%. But it's nice to know that in the early stages that there are treatments that help decrease the pain, keep the swelling down, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that, that is really, really important for us. Okay, this, this diagram uh, is uh, one of the knee, and um, uh, what I'm trying to demonstrate here is essentially what happens with osteoarthritis. So the yellowish colored with the uh, little markings on them, there, they'll be the bones. Uh, so that's the, the femur and the, uh, the tibia. And you'll notice in green, covering them, there is a, um, a, a sort of a membrane, and that is cartilage. And um, it's articular cartilage, and uh, um, what you find is that with time and with a lot of activity or re resulting from uh, injury or damage uh, from 
jumping off a ladder too often, if you like, is that the bone and cartilage start to wear down. Uh, and the bone can further wear down the cartilage itself. And when you get a break in that, um, you will find that you get what's called bone on bone. And that rubbing is serious, it's painful, and it causes what we affectionately know as bone spurs. And once you get bone spurs, you've got pain. And also, the second thing that happens in this area, you have a, um, a joint capsule there, and this is filled with synovial fluid. Um, it's like uh, lubricating uh, the pistons in your car, really. And once you, uh, you get a little uh, hole in the, uh, in the engine, the oil leaks out. And when you start to get a little hole in the synovial membrane, you start to lose fluid. And I'll, I'll tell you how we overcome some of that later on. But once that happens, uh, your knee is in jeopardy. Uh, you're in a great deal of pain. You'll get uh, inflammation that is caused by this um, because you're not able to nourish, nourish the cartilage. Uh, and that really is um, a problem. <laughs> Okay. I've already spoken about some of the things on this particular slide, but the, what it really is is that the cartilage becomes rough, and um, you've heard stories of individuals who stepped off a curb and uh, they said, my knee locked on me and I fell down. Um, that uh, is result usually of um, a piece of cartilage that has broken off and it gets into the articulating joint and you can't bend the knee and of course when you step off a curb or down a stair you have to bend it and down you go. Um, you only hope that you haven't had anything to drink that day so that you've got a really good excuse uh, for falling down. Um, and the second part um, uh, leads to the buildup of osteophytes when, this, when you lose the uh, fluid in the synovial membrane, and an osteophyte is what we, we, uh, we term as a, a bone spur, and uh, that leads into real problems uh, in terms of pain. Okay, we're into 15, slide 15. Okay, this is a picture of a knee um, in the uh, a highly flexed position. It's obviously uh, a model. But what I'm attempting to show you here is that uh, if I bring my arrow down, and I think I can remember how to do this. Dana, I can't get it to turn around, so oh, there we go. Now, if I bring the arrow down into a spot such as this, this area here, you can see the white, the white around the rest, and the um, the area that is the darker color here is an area where the um, cartilage has worn away or been worn away, and and so you still have lots of cartilage. But once that is worn away, it starts to rub. Well, first of all, you start to lose synovial fluid, and it starts to rub on the end point of the bone or the cartilage below. And once it's worn away the cartilage in that particular area, then you're, you're going to get osteophytes and you're going to start to get pain and swelling. And in this particular example, um, you can see that um, there, there are um, more areas um, where um, the osteoarthritis has started to take effect. And there are several areas here. This particular little devil right here, that is an osteophyte, a bone spur, and that, that really causes uh, problems. And, uh, no, I'm going to uh, watch, watch the station video. They, 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 uh, they, 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 I want to remind those of you who are longer and longer in the fall and 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 the
Sorry for the interruption. Be sure to turn on your lock talk again, Bert. Uh, yeah, that's, that's no problem. I, I heard the individual on the phone who said, I'm really going to listen to this, and uh, that immediately uh, suggests to me that uh, he's suffering from bone spurs, and uh, believe me, they are very painful, and uh, the only way you're going to get rid of those is uh, through surgery. There's just not much else you can do with them, especially when they grow to uh, larger sizes, and they are exceedingly painful. Um, and uh, once again, there's something that can be uh, here. Okay, the rest of the slide just tells you um, uh, the various joints uh, that um, are principally attacked by arthro arth arth osteoarthritis, but all of them uh, really are or can be. Um, <clears throat> Um, there are two types of osteoarthritis, and this is what creates some problems, especially for your physician, because he has to, to find out which type you have. There's primary osteoarthritis, which is really a wear and tear aspect of the disease that uh, wears down your cartilage and, uh, and tears the synovial membrane, uh, etc. And this can be caused by an intrinsic uh, defect. Uh, excessive weight is a, is a true cause, and occupational overuse. And uh, when we get down to the education section, I'm going to talk a little bit about that on something from the uh, Arthritis Society of Canada, which is really important because many people uh, work or have worked um, in, in the jobs that put a tremendous amount of stress on some of your joints. And um, we'll talk about things that you can do to overcome this. The second type of uh, osteoarthritis is one that's uh, related to defects in joint structure. There's not a lot you can do about that. You may have been born with it. Uh, it may be related to a, a work-related or an athletic-related uh, defect um, in the joint structure. Uh, you've twisted a knee, uh, for example, severely, and uh, um, the ligamentous poles did not go back uh, the way they were originally, so you end up with a, a slight defect in your joint structure, and that therefore leads to various problems. Um, and I can give you uh, a personal example. I've had a double arthroplasty, which means that I have two um, uh, wonderful knees. They're made of titanium and cobalt. And um, uh, one has uh, had no problems in the uh, eight years now since I've had it. Uh, the other one has always been painful. And the reason being that when they put the knee joint back in, they made the alignment perfect. And my knee was not perfect when we started because of football injuries that the alignment was a little bit off. And so as a result, all the pull on the cartilage and the ligaments um, uh, pulled as if it was uh, normal, and the lengthening of the instant shortening was as if they were normal, and it's not. So I will have uh, a certain amount of pain uh, in that joint for the rest of my life, but uh, believe me, that's a lot better than the alternatives. Um, I couldn't even walk downstairs frontwards. I had to walk down backwards, and uh, that wasn't uh, a great deal of fun either. So you have to remember that there are two types. Uh, one we can do something about, uh, a fair amount about. The second one, uh, there's not a lot you can do about until we get to the, uh, the medical steps on uh, what you have to go through uh, to take care of this particular problem. Okay. What are the symptoms? For those of you who are on the phone uh, or on the, uh, on the um, uh, webinar with us, uh, webinar, um, I don't have to tell you what these are because you know. Um, but it starts out with um, a little bit of ache and then a little bit of throbbing. Uh, the pain can get a little bit worse. Uh, there are those individuals who say, I can tell you when it's going to rain. Well, you can. Um, I agree with you. Um, but it's uh, not primarily related to anything but changes in atmospheric pressure. Um, and especially if you start to lose uh, some of the synovial fluid, uh, then yes, you know when it's going to rain. The uh, pain and the discomfort gets worse as the day progresses. 
Uh, and as time progresses, it, it starts to get worse. So it's not just a daily thing. Um, a little bit each day is a little bit worse. Um, if you don't do something uh, to uh, manage the, uh, the problem, and, but usually you'll find at the end of the day, if you lie down, that uh, the, the pain is relieved with rest. Well, it's like anything else. If you take the pressure off the joint, uh, then uh, you're going to get rid of some of that pain uh, because the pain is dependent upon movement in, in that particular joint. Well, what are some of the symptoms? Well, most of you will know that you say, hmm, I hear a little creaking sound uh, in my knee. That's not a good thing. Um, you don't want your knee or any other joint talking to you. A creaking sound tells you that, whoops, there's a little bit of a problem here. And the sooner you get to your physician and have that taken care of, the better it's going to be. Early identification of the problem, early management will decrease some of your problems. Then the... Uh, the stiffness in joints, uh, a pain in the, in the joints, um, can be caused a little bit um, by um, not using the particular joint. So a lot of people say, oh, I've got pain, I'm going to give it a rest, a big long rest, I'm not going to do uh, any physical activity with it. That is the worst thing that you can possibly do um, because it is well shown that physical activity um, it does not have any deleterious effects whatsoever on osteoarthritis, but it does have many effects on the rest of your body, such as strengthening the muscles around the joint. The stronger the muscles are around the joint, if you catch it early on, the less pain you're going to have in that particular joint. Another thing that, uh, that people will notice is that uh, their gait starts to change a little bit, especially older people. They start to take some shorter steps. Uh, the um, uh, strength around a particular joint is weakened uh, or even loosened as a result, and so you take shorter steps. Well, that's a good indication that you have got some type of um, a problem in that joint and that uh, should be looked at. And this can be diagnosed with, with x-ray. Uh, remember, an x-ray only identifies uh, hard tissue. Um, but uh, you can see problems related to the bone. You can identify osteophytes or bone spurs. And uh, the cartilage forms sort of a gray shadow uh, on the x-ray. And uh, you can actually identify whether there's floating pieces of cartilage or if the cartilage is getting very, very thin. So when you do get to your physician, one of the first things that he's going to do is uh, send you off for an x-ray. And now you know why. Um, going on to the next slide, um, which I have, um, I want to talk to you a little bit now about clinical care, medical management, because there are um, several steps in this. Um, the first, of course, is that you have to get to your physician and have the, the uh, disease or the problem identified. Secondly, you have to realize that maybe initially, but um, throughout your program, exercise is extremely important because of all of the things it does for that particular joint. It will reduce pain. Uh, it will improve your range of motion. You can increase strength around the affected uh, joints. You'll normalize your gait. And it'll help you once again to carry out active daily living, uh, which is really, really important. The, what are the various steps? And there, there are um, actually eight or eight and a half steps that you're going to come up against in dealing with this disease. Um, the first one is, of course, is the easiest one, and that is that you take uh, non-prescription medicine. Um, and the, uh, the number one um, non-prescription medicine used, of course, uh, will be those that will help you reduce pain, so they're analgesics, and those that will help you in, uh, reduce inf uh, inflation, so they're anti-inflammatories, to help uh, reduce yeah, any swelling. Yeah, that, all the time. that all the time. Um, and uh, 
the number one uh, uh, drug, if you like, being used right now um, is acetaminophen, uh, which is Tylenol. And um, Tylenol will work for a little while, 